Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Piyush and in this video, we'll be looking into different deployment strategy that we should be aware of and we should be practicing as a DevOps engineer or as a cloud engineer to streamline our processes, to streamline our CI, CD and to achieve operational excellence. And we'll be looking into few of the most common deployment strategies such as blue-green deployment, canary deployment, A-B testing, rolling update, recreate and so on. So without wasting any time further, let's just start the video and let's just get into the concept. Okay, so we'll be starting with the first deployment strategy, which is a blue green deployment. In this, what we have is you have uh, multiple versions of application running. So let's say you have a production environment running as a blue environment with version 1.0. Then what you do is you provision a newer version 1.1 as a green environment. So this is the version that we are planning to deploy into the production. But before we actually deploy into the production, we create a dummy sort of environment so that we can make our changes. We can test the environment before we actually redirect users to it, right? So now we have two versions. One is version 1.0, which is your live production environment. Then version 1.1, which is a dummy environment. Right. And currently all the users have been redirected to the blue environment, which is version 1.0 with the help of a load balancer. Right. Now what we will do is because we have already deployed version 1.1. Now we'll be doing all our testing on this version. So the benefit of doing this, we don't have to actually do the testing on production environment. We are doing it on a dummy environment and with the updated production code, right? We'll be doing all the testing, everything over here. And if we need any changes, we can certainly make it because it does not have any impact on the user as of now, right? Once all our testing has been complete, once we are fully satisfied with the newer version in the green environment, we then make a switch over here. Like earlier, the traffic was going to the old environment, which is version 1.0. Now we are redirecting our traffic to the newer version, which is version 1.1. Now this environment becomes a blue environment or a production environment. And this environment, the blue environment that we had, this will become our dummy environment. Now, why do we even need this environment now? Because we have already promoted the version. We have already deployed the newer version and the users are also being redirected to the newer version. The reason behind that is in case like we can keep this running for, let's say a couple of hours, few hours or a number of days. And if there are any issues in the newer version, we can easily do the rollback to this version. We just have to make the switch again from this environment to the older environment and the rollback will be completed. So that's the benefit of using blue green. The rollback time is minimum or uh, instant. The deployment is also instant because we are doing it beforehand and we are just making a switch at the right time. Once we have all our approvals, once we have all the uh, testing and everything has been performed, only then we make that switch. So there are a lot of benefits of uh, using this blue green. The disadvantage, however, of using this is we have to maintain two environments separately. It, we are maintaining our blue environment. We are maintaining our green environment as well. This is the reason we cannot use this at all the places because of the infrastructure costs that it comes with. Uh, that's the first uh, that we wanted to look into. Now, if you move on to the next one, which is a canary deployment. So canary deployment is a technique of introducing the changes to the production without impacting the users. And in this, we do it by slowly and gradually making the small set of changes to the users before we roll out to all the users, right? How does that happen? Let's say we have all the users currently running on older version 1.0, right? And we also have a newer version 1.1, but all the users are only listening to the older version at this point of time. Now, what we can do is we can redirect a certain number of users, let's say 2% of the users to the newer version. We can monitor this. We can monitor those users. We can take feedback from those users and we can make sure that this newer version is safe to be deployed to rest of the users. An example of that would be, let's say 
you are working in an organization so you only release let's say you have a devops team they release this version the newer version to only a subset of user let's say to only its employees first before they actually release it to the outside world so these 2% users or 1% users or you know 0.5% user this could be the internal employees of the company or these could be the beta testers and so on right so you deploy to that you take the feedback from those users you monitor the environments application and so on and then you gradually keep increasing the traffic to more users and you keep doing it until the newer version is deployed to 100% of the users okay so this is how canary works and the rollback strategy is similar to blue green you can easily switch back from 100 user and you can make it zero user and you can redirect the traffic to the older version 100% users right so rollback is also pretty simple in that case and uh, it is also sometimes refers to as incremental or phased rollout right now the next one is a b testing a b testing is pretty similar to canary release however in a b testing you can also route the traffic based on certain routing rules right on that we were not routing the traffic based on rules it was a predefined set of users that we had but in ab testing you can build certain rules such as your browser versions so for example all the mozilla users will still be getting the newer version or all the chrome user will be getting the older version something like that or user agent like maybe uh, the changes has been already rolled out to the android users for example right or the geolocation or the operating system type from which the users are accessing the application so we can do this testing based on certain routing rules and based on that we can do pretty much similar thing like what we used to do in canary we redirect it to a certain set of user and then we keep rolling out to the new users based on the feedback based on the performance of the application the other difference between canary and ab testing is when you deploy the version you actually compare these two versions based on their performance so you do the version comparison between you know all the users and whichever version is producing the high results you actually deploy that version to 100% of the users so that's another important point to keep in mind uh, and this is another important difference between canary and ab testing now the next one is rolling update so suppose we have a three tier architecture and this is an example of an azure this will be pretty much similar for any cloud instead of uh, th these are the virtual machine scale sets over here for high availability if it is aws it will be auto scaling group if it is google cloud it will be managed instance group that is the only difference almost pretty much the architecture would be the same so what happens in rolling update you roll out the changes to one of the virtual machines or one of the servers you know let's say this machine is currently being upgraded to the newer version so this is not available to the user and to make sure that we have enough resources available for the capacity then it provisions a new virtual machine and this is also called surge upgrade right so to fulfill the capacity let's say uh, to handle the current load we needed two virtual machines one is currently in progress of upgrade so we only have one left so we added one more virtual machine to accommodate the failed virtual machine or to accommodate the virtual machine that is still in progress right so still users will be getting the same performance user will be getting the same response because they are still getting redirected to either of these two virtual machines for their web application right this is what happens in rolling update so the difference is the changes will be slower you know because it is currently updating one machine at a time or one server at a time the rollback will also be slower but it will save you some cost because you don't have to maintain multiple environments you don't have to maintain blue green environment and and so on right so that's the other difference so when it happens let's say this machine has been upgraded over here to version 1.1 okay so the next time 
after this, this machine will be upgraded, right? So again, this machine has now become version 2.0. So this machine will be upgraded in progress. And there is this surge upgrade already happening to accommodate the failure of this machine, right? This is how rolling update works. Then we have all at once or recreate. This is the default strategy that we've been doing for a long time. If you are in IT for a longer time or if uh, you have worked in on-premises server or what we used to do before all these DevOps cloud, these uh, concepts came into the picture. So what we do is uh, like, yes, there was no order scaling groups or no virtual machine scale set at that time. So let's say you have an application listening or certain server. So every server will be updated all at once. Everything will be progressed. So there will be a certain downtime. I'm not sure if this is readable, but that means downtime. Okay. So um, there'll be a certain downtime because all the applications will be upgraded at once. And once that is upgraded, all the application will become available. We generally used to do this as part of our maintenance window or there is a change window. You can call it anything you want. So this is usually governed by strict change management process with, you know, uh, and usually done at off peak hours because there'll be definitely some downtime over here. And rollback will also have some downtime because again, you have to bring down all the machines, deploy the changes and start the machines and all of these things, right? So this is what I mean by all at once or recreate deployment strategy. Now we have looked into multiple deployment strategies and this is the difference between all of those strategies. And this is what we need to keep in mind while selecting a deployment strategy for our use case. So deployment strategy could depend on different things, different requirements, such as, you know, your downtime requirement, your production traffic testing, if you need conditional based routing or not, if you need minimum rollback time, or you can compromise with the rollback time. If you need to save some cost and maintenance efforts on infra side, or you are okay with that. Right? So keeping in mind all these factors, we can choose either of the deployment strategies. Right? So if we need zero downtime, for example, then we can choose either of these four. Zero downtime is not possible in the recreate strategy. If we need to perform live a testing of the production user, then we can choose between canary or AB testing. If we need to make sure that we are also doing conditional based routing, then AB testing will be the right choice and, and so on. So these are all the factors that we should configure that we should keep in mind while selecting this deployment strategy for our use case. And these all we have already discussed. So have a look at that. Once again, if you face any difficulties, please let me know and I will try to answer your question. All right, that's it for this video. I hope now you understand the difference between all these deployment strategies. And this is irrespective of the cloud that you are working on. This is irrespective of the services that you are using. These are some of the general deployment strategy that you use as a DevOps or cloud engineer. So if you are okay with that, if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends, family and colleagues so that they could also understand they could also take the advantage of this learning opportunity. And I will see you soon with the next video. If you are new here, please don't forget to subscribe the channel. That would really make a difference to me and to my channel so that it will reach to the maximum audience and I will keep publishing these type of content. So thank you so much and I will see you soon with the next video.